month for two years. If you count all the guards that were tied, chained with Paul during those times, it will be more than 4,000 guards. And if you are Paul, Paul, I'm sure, he shared the gospel to each of those guards. And according to history, that these guards had an inside rope to the emperor. And that's why, according to history, even the emperor's family became believers. The gospel reached the, even the emperor's family. And that's why the emperor Nero, who is not a believer, who hates Christianity, had his wife, his mother, and even some of his children killed because they became believers. You know, sharing the gospel is like chain reaction. If you share the gospel to one, that one, because of the joy and what Christ can, can do and will do with, in his life, will also share it to another. And that's why in verse 14, it, it says, Because of my chains, most of the brothers in the Lord Christians have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. They saw somebody who is inside prison who has been sharing the gospel day in, day out. These Christians got so encouraged. They were out. They were not in prison. And they became bold in sharing the gospel to others. And so the perspective you need to live from, if you're going to have a happy life, is found in Romans 8.28. And we know that all things God works for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. In other words, this, is, this verse is telling us God has a purpose behind every one of your problems. If you are a believer, if you are a Christian, and you know that you have a personal relationship with God, God has a purpose behind every one of my problems. And when you get this perspective, you are on your way to a joyful living. Paul says that God has a purpose behind all my problems, therefore, I have a perspective to live from. But it's not only a perspective. It's a correct and right perspective that we need. But at the same time, he also said, in order to be happy, to be joyful in life, I need a priority to live by. Priority to live by. Especially when things get tough. And I know that this happens many times. When things get tough, I need to know what is really important in order to be distinguish the trivial things from the significant and important things. I cannot be living my life based on my problems, but it should, I should live my life based on my priorities. If you don't choose your priorities, you'll go around putting out, you know, putting out fires one after the other. Living your life simply from problem to problem to problem and not choosing what is important. And that's why we find here in the letter of, of Paul in, in chapter 1, verses 15 to 17. I'd like to read this, verses 15 to 17. It says, it's true that some here preach Christ because with me out of the way, they think they'll step right into the spotlight. But the others do, do it with the best heart in the world. One group is motivated by pure heart, 
knowing that I am here defending the message, wanting to help the others. Now that I am out of the picture, because he was in prison, are merely greedy, hoping to get something out of it for themselves. Their motive is bad. Their motives are bad. They see me as, a com as their competition. So the worse, the worse it goes for me, the better they think for them. You see, here, there are conflicts. There are other ministers, other preachers who envy him, who criticize him. And so Apostle Paul thinks, this is not really important. I need to live by the priority that God has given me. That's why in verse 18 he said, but what does it matter? Does that really matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Paul said he wasn't going to let anybody steal his joy. Yes, they're criticizing me. Yes, they're against me. Yes, they're trying to compete. Doesn't matter to me, he said. To me, it's not important. That's not my priority. My priority is Christ is preached. And if Christ is preached to others, if the gospel is shared with others, then I'm happy. <coughs> I can rejoice. And that's the only question in the book of Philippians. It's the question of priority. Does it matter? Is it important? And you can find that uh, question of priority every day in your life, in your life with others. How many arguments in your marriage are over little things that really don't matter? Is it worth losing your, love, your joy? No. You should have a perspective to live from and a priority to live by and know what is important in our life. Proverbs 3 verse 6 says, In everything you do, put God first and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him that he is always first in your life. And he will direct your path. Make your way straight. This is what counts. Your priority. God putting him first life. But there's a third thing. In order to have a joyful living, I need the power to live on. I need a power to live on. By this I'm saying I cannot do it by myself. I cannot be successful in doing it using my own strength, my own wisdom, my own ability. I need power different from my own power. Stronger than me. Life is hard. And sometimes it can drain you completely. One crisis of another can drain you. You can lose your energy. You can lose your, your strength. Perhaps some of you are ready to throw in the towel. That means to give up. I'm, I've done the best I could, but it's not good enough. I'm tired and sick. 
In other words, you need fresh power. You need fresh filling of the Holy Spirit in you. That's why in verse 19, Apostle Paul said, For I know that through your prayers and the help given by the Spirit of Jesus, what has happened to me will turn out to be my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed. Apostle Paul mentioned here two things, which has become the source of power for him. First thing he mentioned was prayer. He said, the prayers of other people has really helped me has given me strength and kept me going. In spite of my four-year imprisonment, I know people have been praying for me. And that has become a source of strength for him. And I believe that's true. Because if somebody is praying for you, that means that somebody is lifting you up in his, his or her prayer. And the reason I can stand here confident of what God wants me to tell you today is because I know back home my wife is praying for me. And of course, in addition to that, what the Holy Spirit has given Paul the strength to overcome all these things that he went through in his life. The Holy Spirit. And that's why he said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, he said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Can you say that for yourself? I can do all things through, through Christ who gives me the strength. That is if Christ is in you. That is, if you have a personal relationship with Christ, then you can say, just like Paul, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. I need the power to live on. I cannot depend on my own strength. I cannot depend on my own wisdom, on my own power. That's why I need God. To give me that strength. With God's power, nothing can devastate me. If I'm going to make it in life, I need a perspective to live from. Something so I can see the way things really are. I need a priority to live by. So that I know what is important. And I need the power to live on that gives me strength to keep me going, to keep, keep me on and keeping on. But then there's a last thing here in this passage. In order to be joyful in life, we need a purpose to live for. What is your purpose? You know, the Apostle Paul, this time, when he wrote this, he was already old. Hmm? Must be around, you know, 70. He must be, he must be tired. He had been in prison for four years. He's probably ready to go to heaven. They've, got, they've taken every single thing from him. All his friends cannot be with him. They've taken away his ministry. They've taken away his freedom and his privacy. They've taken everything from him except the one thing that cannot be taken away from, from him and from each one of you. And that is the purpose. Purpose 
to live for. And that's why the Apostle Paul in verse 21, he said, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Is that your motto in life? Is that your purpose in life? It says, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. You know, he's not, he's not being suicidal by saying that. Of course, he was anticipating that he's get, he was getting close to his, his own death. But he was not afraid of dying. Death is just on to a better thing, out of the prison. But while I'm here, the Apostle Paul is saying, while I'm here, I have a purpose for living. For me, to live is Christ. How about you? For me to live is blank. Fill in the blank. To some people, they would say, for me to live is having possessions. I want to buy this. I want to buy that. I need money for this. I need money for that. That's how we live. For me to live is possession. Get all you can.